We're so delighted to have Dr. Dave Martin back with us. He is an author. He's a motivational speaker. He speaks not only in great churches, but in colleges and universities and corporate settings. He's a businessman, and he's got a new book entitled The 12 Traits of the Greats. And we're going to be talking to him about that because I'd like to find out who are some of these greats that are in this book. So please join Joni and me in welcoming back from Orlando, Florida, Dr. David Martin. David, how bless you. So good to have you. Okay, so why did you get into the success business? That's better well, than being in the failure business. Yeah, definitely. Well, you know, I think God wants us to be a success. Yes. I mean, you look all throughout the Bible. He talks about that. Commit your plans to me. I'd cause them to succeed. Meditate on my word day and night. You'll have good success. And, uh, you know, growing up playing sports, we were always into inspiration and, and self-improvement, that kind of thing. And I, I just began to see how all this was in the Bible. I started finding all this in the Bible. And it was years, I, I guess, before God really put it on my heart to begin to search but as every time I'd read the Bible, I'd just find all these principles of success. And I started saying, you know what? No one in the body of Christ really is doing, uh, the, people in the church have to go into the world to get these kind of principles, but they're all right there in the Word. And how can I bring it alive for, for the body of Christ to see God wants you to succeed? Okay, so how did you choose these 12 traits and, and uh, these great people? How did you decide which, which ones to choose? Because yeah, there's was, a lot of That was the hard from. part. Yeah, and, there, and we may come out with the next 12 traits after that, I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, I, I just, I started looking as I studied great achievers, whether it was in the Bible, King David, Abraham, whether it was in the world, uh, Sir Winston Churchill. Or, oh, I loved him. Or, uh, or whether it was modern day actors or, you know, I, I was- Sir Winston Churchill, isn't he the one that said, we have nothing to fear but fear itself? Yes, yeah. or never and John give Kennedy in. quoted him on his inauguration and used that line, but it yep. came from Sir Winston Churchill. And we talk about John F. Kennedy in there, but we talk about a lot of greats, but I, one of the big things I say right up front is you can be great and not be famous, just like you can be famous and not be great. Wow. And, uh, and that's, that's one of the things, because I'll talk about my grandfather in there. To me, he was great. Someone's third grade teacher may be what was great to them. Yes. So, it doesn't have to be someone famous, but it's people that have achieved greatness or had an impact on your life, and that makes them great to you. So some of the uh, things, you, some of the traits you talk about, maybe you can touch on these. Cal obviously can't go through all 12, but uh, let's see, a couple of the ones that stand out to me is courage. Courage, yeah. That, well, we were just talking about Winston Churchill. I love his quote, never give in. Never, never. It's the courage to, to step out. And we would call it faith a lot of times in church, but in the world they call it risk or, or courage. But we can take that and show great people that took risk. Uh, Donald Trump would be a risk taker, but yet so would uh, Noah as he built the ark. And yeah. you look at these people uh, in the church and in the, in the world that use these traits to achieve greatness in their life. You know, the Christian movie is out right now called Courageous, yeah. and it was in the top 10 in the opening weekend, and we encourage people to go out and support that movie. Uh, another important trait, I think, and a lot of these are biblical traits, integrity. Yeah. Yes, integrity. You know, it's just staying right. You know, I, I watch people, I use the illustration there of a ladder. And uh, just looking at Daystar over the, over the years as it's grown, the higher, you know, a ladder starts wide, but the higher you get, the more narrow it gets. Yes. The more people notice you, the more people mm -hmm. see you and, and, and living a life of integrity because everyone's watching and it gets oh, narrower yes. at the top. So the, the road gets a little narrow as the higher yes. you lead. But, uh, but I notice in, in great people that in my life, they walked uh, lives of integrity. My oh, grandfather was so one. True. You know, 68 years of marriage, uh, pastoring for, uh, he's still 89 years old, still preaching oh, the gospel every chance he gets. That is great. Oh, and, uh, I, I tell, People who are yeah. truly called of God never retire. No. They may slow down, but they never really retired, do they? 89, he preached last weekend. I, I always say he's, he's so old, he has an autographed copy of the Bible. But uh, he's been <laughs> preaching a long time, but uh, but still but still going after it. But but has lived all those years. He may not be famous, but he's walked a, a life of integrity. And I want to say something about integrity. Integrity doesn't mean that you never make a mistake, right? Because we're all human. We all make mistakes. But integrity means that if, not not if you do, but when you make a mistake, is how you respond to it. Yeah. It is your attitude, it is your reaction, how you handle it that is going to show whether you have integrity well, in your life. That's exactly what I was going to say because you, you know, you use 
uh, 12 traits of the greats and you're talking about men, but still when you talk about men or human beings in general, or women, or women <laughs> then you're talking about you know, flawed humans. Yeah. Humans. Yeah. And so, even the greatest Bible characters, you can still see oh, things yeah. that well, they you... did wrong and mistakes they made. But what can we learn, you know, through all of that? Don't you think that's the important part of it? Yeah. I mean, David's one of my favorite people in the Bible. David made a few mistakes. He went through a a, a few things in, in his life, but his heart after God, yeah. you know. And and but I, I look, I use him as several examples in in the Bible of, of success. I, I like David, you know. I do too. I killed Goliath, cut his head off. I always say he was the first person I found to really get ahead in life. And uh, uh, uh -huh. but, but he was he was uh -huh. yeah, slow, but there. Uh, but you know he he was. It took me about five <laughs> seconds to get that. Yeah. But he was into no success. No wonder you like him. You're named after him. <laughs> yeah, they, there you go. And I named my son Solomon. So Aww. we're just keeping the, the lintage going. No, I'm glad but, you didn't name him Absalom. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but but I, I saw David use principles of, of success. One of the things we talk about in there is the imagination. You know, a lot of people don't talk about imagination because, well, that's a new age thing or Walt Disney thing or something. But God started. God, God came up with that. I mean, before Daystar had all these stations and before this building, this beautiful studio, you could see it. Yes. You can see it through the eyes of faith, which is imagination. Abraham, God said, Abraham, come out of your tent. Look up in the sky. See the stars in the sky? Get a picture of the descendants that are going to come after you. He began to visualize or use his imagination. And so understanding those principles are right there in, in the Word of God. Okay, so you give kind of a definition or a remark about greatness in your book. Do you remember that? I, I'm begins sure I by give a taking lot. responsibility for your choices. Yeah, I mean that that's greatness the, begins by taking responsibility for your choices. That is so yeah. good. Yeah, you know, that, is that the beginning? I mean, because do you know how many people that I have met in my lifetime who want to blame everyone else for their oh, failures, definitely. for their problems, <laughs> for their situation? It's always somebody else's always fault, and they don't want to take responsibility for their even, own choices. People even blame the devil. Yeah. yeah, I got right here on this program and said, I don't even blame the devil. I yeah. blame me. I take 100% responsibility, yeah. and I still do. But again, it's, what, it's how you respond to it. Yes. What is that scripture that talks about, though I fall, yet I shall arise? Now, Dave, you talk about in the book the two most important days of a person's life. Yeah. What are those? The day you were born and the day you discover why. Okay, explain that. Why is well, that the uh, two most important? I mean, the, you're here, so that's important. You get, that's how you got here. But then discovering your purpose, your passion. There's a chapter in there on passion, which uh, I just got a, a text this morning from some uh, from a pastor. So I'm reading that chapter on passion, and it, this is the greatest stuff I've ever uh, read because it's just helping people discover why they're here. I read the other day in USA Today, 52% of Americans hate their jobs. Oh, that's awful. Uh, get up every day, go place they don't want to go, do things they don't want to do because they're not doing what they love. I love my and, job. Let me interrupt for a second. I've even said I would pay to get to do what I do. And boy, that's important when you find out. That's why you got to find out God's plan for your life because when you do, you're going to enjoy what you're doing if you know God's truly called you to do it. Yes. And, and, and passion could be, I mean, someone, their, their passion. When I talk about greatness in here, it could be maybe you want to be the greatest mother, you met the greatest CEO. I mean, greatness is different that's right. to different people. And, and a mother has to have a passion for children. Uh, Think about the mother of Billy Graham yes. and how she trained him and raised him and nurtured him. How, how important is that? Yes. Yet most people don't even know what his mother's name was. Right, right. But there was greatness and she was bringing the greatness out in others. So, so I wrote this book really could be for, for anybody, whether it's greatness on the, on the baseball field. We work with a lot of professional athletes for the field of sports, whether it's the field of business, whether it's just the field of life, a great husband, a great father, a great mother. There's going to be principles in that book that immediately is going to make your life better. Okay, so the book is The Twelve Traits of the Greats. How can people get this book? Uh, they, can, they can get it anywhere. They can go to their local Barnes & Noble or Mardell or uh, family bookstores, any of those. You can go to Amazon.com. It's available there on the Kindle, the iBooks, all of it. Or they can go to my website and, and, uh, and purchase it there as well. Okay, where are you going to be ministering next? Uh, let's see. This week I go to Canada. I'll be with Leon Fontaine, great church in Canada. Then we're with Casey Treat next week. 
uh, out in Seattle, and, and we'll be in California, L.A. area in the next couple weeks. That's kind of the... So if they go to the website, they can find out your yeah, itinerary and find out where you are. And I know that that will be a blessing. Well, the book is The Twelve Traits of the Greats. The Twelve Undeniable Qualities of Uncommon Achievers and How You Can Master Them in Your Life Right Now. We can learn from others. This has always been one of the things that God has given me insight to is learn from others. You can learn from the successes of others and you can learn from the mistakes of others. I've often contended that you can learn, actually learn more from the failures of others than you can some of their successes. In other words, learn what not to do. Learn how to not do it the wrong way. So get this book. It'll be an inspiration to you. It'll be an inspiration to a friend or a loved one. Get it and write an inscription in there and it will mean so much to them because if you do that and you write something in there, they'll never throw it away and every time they see it, they will be reminded of you and it will be a deposit, a seed in their life. But Dr. Dave Martin, thank you for being with us. Well, thank you. That's thank why you I wrote it writing. in front of yours. Yes, so right you here. you would never Look throw at, it away. See, <laughs> there it is right there. There's my inscription. And I will read this book because this is a book that's right down my alley.